In the previous video, we built this login screen so users can log in. Now I'm going to build the, the screen for uh, when, you, when users are authenticated, they'll be able to update their email and their username. So we're going to do the same kind of thing we've been doing. We're going to build a form, build a view, add it to the URLs, and then build a template. Um, yeah, so it's gonna, it should be familiar, getting familiar uh, to you about now. There's, it should be some repetition that you're seeing. I'm actually going to start this one a little different though. I'm, instead of building the form first, I'm going to build the view first because that's typically what I do when I'm actually developing. Usually I start with the view and then I build it kind of backwards. So I'm going to go into account, go to new file, and I'm going to call this account.html. It's going to be very similar to login and like the other ones. So I'm actually going to copy that whole thing, close this, and I'm going to paste it in. And then now I'm just going to change things. So this is going to be account. It's going to be for field in account form is what it's going to be called. Change anything that says login form to account form, login form all to account form. Uh, this will say save changes because if anything is changed, it's just saving any changes made. And I think that's, uh, that should be generally it. I might be forgetting something, but should be mostly okay. So I'm pressing control S to save that. And now I'm going to build the form. So I'm going to forms.py and we're going to build this form. It's going to be very similar to the account authentication form. So coming down here, let's go class or I'll give myself some more room, uh, class account update form. It'll extend forms dot model form. Uh, this won't have any parameters since we're not going to have a password. So it's just going to be class meta model equals account. Nothing new here. Same kind of thing we did in the previous form. Then I want to do the email field and I want to be able to change the username field. Now, instead of doing clean, which will essentially go through all the properties for the form, you can also clean individual properties. So I can do clean email, for example, which will just reference the email um, whether and then it'll whether the form is valid or not it will run this method to do apply any extra logic that you might want to so i'm going to write email dot equals uh, self dot cleaned data and reference that email field uh, but of course actually if if we learned something from the previous one we want to make sure that the form is valid so up here i want to do if self dot is valid then i want to get that email and uh, then check that email to make sure that it doesn't equal some other email that's already created in the database. So accept. So if now I need to check to see if that account exists. So if this account exists, I want to do account dot objects dot exclude and write PK equals self dot instance self dot instance dot PK and then get the email equals email. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm checking to see if this account exists. So if account does not exist, that means we're good to go. That means I want to return this email and we can we can update this account to this new email. Otherwise, I want to do raise forms dot validation error. And I want to say email percentage s this is a way you can add strings in Django. So I'll do a single quotation here and a single quotation here. If string S uh, is already in use, then I want to just show that that account. So now, so that's how you do just the email. So I can copy this and I can do the same thing. Whoops, the same thing for the password. So define clean email, make sure that the spacing is all correct. This is going to be clean. Did I say password? I meant username. For the username, if self dot is valid, username equals clean data username account pk username equals username, and then if the count does not exist, return the username. And I want to say username is already in use, and then print account dot username. I can also do account dot email here, but it doesn't matter since the string method will return the email by default. But just to be explicit, I could do account account.email or you could actually just print the email like this or print the username like that since it's already since it's already a variable up there. So those two methods will make sure that the the email that they're trying to change it to and also the username that they're trying to change it to are not already in use by some other user. Next we're going to work on the view. So I'm going into views.py inside of accounts and this just should be pretty similar to the other ones too. We're going to go define account view want to return the get the request 
if not request.user.is authenticated. So if that user is not authenticated, uh, then we want to redirect to the login screen. So if they're not authenticated, we need them to log in because they shouldn't be able to view their account since they're not they're not authenticated. That doesn't make any sense. So then we do context and if request.post, I want to get the form. So I need to import that form. Our form is called account update form. So I'm going to add that to the imports up here. There's our account update form. So form equals account update form request dot post and we also need to pass something as an instance variable so request dot user because if you look inside the form I'm referencing the instance here to get the primary key of the user of a user that's authenticated so that's what I'm doing here I'm saying uh, this variable named instance is equal to request dot user that way I can use it in the form to query the account if it exists so that's why we need to pass this as input right here so if the form is valid, then we know we're good to go and we can just do form.save. So basically that's, that's gonna commit the changes to the database, any of the changes that the user made to their account. Otherwise, we wanna do form equals account update form and we wanna set some initial properties. So I can do initial equals, these are gonna be the values that are displayed in the form as soon as they visit their profile. So obviously right away we wanna display what their current email is. So request.user.email, and then the username is request.user.username. So all that's gonna do is, is use the request and access the user object or the account object in other words, and display that in the form. So if you look at the HTML, it's just going to, uh, it'll set initial values for this field variable when they first go to their account because they, they want to display currently what their email is and currently what their username is before they try and change it. All right, so the last step is then just adding the form to the context. So I'm gonna go account form equals form and then return render, render request like you've done so many times before. And this is gonna be account dot account or account slash account dot HTML and then pass the context. Now that we have the view, we can go to the URLs file. We can add that new view. So this is gonna be account view. And I can copy this line, throw the account view in there. This will be account, account view. Its name will be account, I can save that. And last but not least, we need to go into our templates and go into base.html and I'm just going to update uh, what this looks like. So currently we have home, we have logout, I want to add something for viewing the account. So I'm going to copy that, paste that in there, I'm actually going to put this on the next line and put this on the next line. So this is going to be account, if they're authenticated I want to be able to go to their account and if they're not authenticated obviously we shouldn't be able to go to their account. So that should be good. I'm going to save that. I don't think there's anything that I forgot, but if there is, we're gonna see in a second here. So I'm gonna go home. Uh, looks like I can't get to an account, that's good. So I'm gonna to go to, I'm gonna log in. There we go, I'm logged in. Notice the top changed, I can go to account, and there is now the account form. So if I want to change my name, I can go to username, save the changes, and there you can see that that was updated up there. This is also updated down here. If I change it again, that's updated. I can also change this, so I can do like tabian.com, go to account, notice that it's saved, save changes. Looks like everything's good to go. So now let's see if I can change to a username or an email that already exists. So I'm gonna try, I believe this guy's username is test, so I'm gonna try and change it to test. So if I type that in there, try and change the username, it says username test is already in use, that's good, okay. Now I'm gonna try and change it, change it to an email that's already in use. So jessica at gmail.com, click save changes. Uh, email Jessica is already in use. This field cannot be null. Um, not sure what, I, I think that's an error. I'm not sure where that error is coming from actually. Let me see. Jessica, this field cannot be null. I guess it's interpreting it as null since it's an invalid field. But either way, it says that the email is already in use, which is good. So, But if I change it to uh, like something that's not already in use, like Mitch at gmail.com, no problem there. Mitch at tabian.ca, change this to Mitchell. Everything is good and the name changes. So everything is working as we expect at this point. So now, now that we have kind of a lot of the basic account stuff 
of the account functionality in place. We can like, you know, register, we can log out, we can log in, we can view account properties, change account properties. Now it's time to work on the aesthetics a little bit. So in the next video, I'm going to be installing something called Bootstrap. And it's Bootstrap, for those of you who don't know, it's the simplest and in my opinion, the best way to style your websites, uh, at least today. Uh, you know, there's tons of ways you can do it manually, which take a huge amount of time, but Bootstrap will save you a massive amount of time. You know, for example, codingwithmitch.com is using, all the styling is using Bootstrap, and it takes very little effort to make like a very elegant looking website.